I'm going to share some other things that have been really popular lately. It's, they seem to go in phases. We have clients that will read an article or something published about QLAX, for example, or Medicaid qualified annuities. <clears throat> and then there's like a whole wave of questions about it. And most of those strategies don't even work out. But the other thing that's becoming really popular right now, considering it's an election year, is the Roth IRA conversions. People are anticipating a higher increase in taxes because the current tax bill that we're in, it does indeed expire in 2025. It's going to be done. Okay. Now, will it renew at the same rate? Maybe. Uh, we don't know. Depends on who gets elected, which this is going to be very interesting. And if they're going to still keep that. And there's lots of talks about changes of social security. Even right now, the most recent article about how they want to extend the full retirement age. And that's what I've been talking about for the last, I don't know, five years of doing workshops. Is that That's probably what they're going to do is extend the full retirement age out or extend the, the earliest eligibility for social security. So a lot of moving parts. One of the things to consider is Roth conversions. And I talk about this in my workshops all the time. That's why I, I tell all the agents too, hey, look, if you're going to do a workshop or general educational event, you want to hit on multiple topics because one topic might draw that client to meeting with you versus another client. So one of the uh, hot topics now, like I mentioned, is the Roth conversions. But there's a lot of rules to Roth conversions. And we're not CPAs. And maybe you are or are aspiring to be, and God bless you, but... You always want to be very cognizant of it. That's why we went over that other training where I have my own set of disclosure forms that it, people sign and acknowledge. I am not a CPA. I'm not giving tax advice. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm basically just a stupid insurance agent is what the form says. That way it helps cover you in the event that they say, well, my agent told me I could do a Roth conversion and I only pay 20% in taxes, All right? You want to avoid that, Okay. So when it comes to Roth conversions, here's how I have the conversation with people. I always bring it up just to let them know to become educated about it. I say, look, there's also an opportunity. You can take some of this qualified money and slowly convert it to a Roth IRA, regardless of your income levels. And they go, oh, really? I go, yeah. And what's nice about that, you're going to pay the taxes either today or for the rest of your life. So you're going to be pissed today or pissed forever. There's no way around not paying the taxes. So a lot of the marketing, they make it seem as if, it's this magical strategy, right? Like this hidden secret. It's not, it's out there. I mean, the IRS is still going to get their money from your money. And if you do Roth conversion calculators, you can see that even at 60 years old, if they were to convert the entire thing and pay this massive tax bill versus stretching it out over the course of time, they will save a ton of money in taxes over the course of time. But are they willing to swallow that pill now? The other thing that you have to consider is that when you do a Roth conversion, it counts as income, which is going to count towards the IRMA limits, okay? IRMA, nobody likes IRMA, but if you're selling Medicare, you're having that conversation, you know about IRMA. And a lot of people will come to us and they'll say, look, I, I converted this policy or converted my brokerage account and now my Medicare payments are $700 a month for each of us or whatever it may be. I go, well, how much did you convert? And they tell us the number half a million, 250,000. I'm like, well, that all adds to your income. And it also adds to your personal taxation for that year. And it also adds to your social security tax. And it also adds to your Medicare tax. It's all tax, right? So there's a, a ramification of conversion more than just paying the tax dollars on that actual convertible amount. It's also going to affect all the other taxes that they're paying, okay? So you want to make people aware of that. Now, you don't have to give them specific advice. I make them aware of that. I say, here's the best way that we work together. You always want to separate your specialists, okay? You don't want your mechanic to be your proctologist, okay? You want to keep a separation of specialists, all right? And so the best way to do that is we will work with your CPA or your tax professional and work out a strategy. Or you can simply just email them and say, look, I'm looking to convert out of my half a million dollar IRA 100,000 per year for the next five years. How is that going to affect my taxes? Let them, the CPA, the tax people that are licensed in that advice giving arena, give the client that advice, not you. Your job is simply to say, look, this is an opportunity that you can do it with. And I'll give you the forms to do the conversion, but I can't give you any tax advice. Okay. And the reason why that's really important is because Roth IRAs, they can be a little bit convoluted. Okay. It's not as simple as just converting it. There are lots of rules with it. So for example, if they do not already have a pre-established Roth then and they go to convert, they need to wait five years before they can access the interest. 
Now, if you're selling them an annuity, you can't separate interest from principal. It's last in, first out. So if they need to access that annuity that they converted within the first five years, not going to be a good deal for them. Okay, They're going to lose the tax favorability. Now, the other thing to consider is that if they already have a Roth in existence, even though it's not the same one, they already have one that's established, that counts towards the five-year rule. So maybe they've already owned a Roth for five years. They can convert and then flip on the income. But again, you don't want to get into the specifics of that. You want to defer that back to the CPA and the tax advisor. Your job is to say, look, you can convert either the entire amount or partial. And we'll get into how partial conversions work with the, these annuity carriers. But it's up to you to reach out to your CPA because I can't give you advice on any tax ramifications. I can just tell you high level that if you convert it, you'll pay ordinary income tax, but there could be some other tax increases on your personal income, your social security, your IRMA, but that's really your CPA. I'm just letting you know that the product can actually do that. Just like the guy who's selling you a car at the car dealership. He can tell you about all the buttons, the features. This is the gas pedal. This is the door. This is how you tune the radio. But if you actually need some actual work on it, if you want to really learn how the radio actually works or whatever, you got to talk to the mechanic shop about that. Okay. Kind of a weird analogy, I guess, but it, it works.